Can you give an overview of what GPT-3 is? Or like you say in your Twitter bio, GPT N plus one, how it works and why it works. So uh, GPT-3 is a human ghost neural network. Um, let's assume that we know what is neural network, okay, by the definition. And it is trained on the entire internet just to predict next word. So let's say it sees part of the uh, article and it the only task that it has at hand, it is to say what would be the next word, uh, what would be the next word. And uh, it becomes uh, uh, really exceptional at the task of figuring out what's the next word. So you might ask, why would uh, this be an important uh, task? Why would it be important to predict what's the next word? And it turns out that a lot of problems uh, can be formulated uh, as a text completion problem. So GPT is purely uh, learning to complete the text. And you could imagine, for instance, if you are asking a question, uh, who is the uh, president of United States, then GPT can give you an answer to it. Uh, it turns out that many more things can be formulated this way. You can format text in the way that you have sentence in English. You make it even look like a, some content of a website uh, elsewhere, which would be teaching people how to translate things between languages. So it would be EN colon uh, text in English, FR colon, and then you uh, uh, and then you ask people uh, and then you ask model to to continue. And it turns out that the such a model is predicting translation from English to French. The crazy thing is that this model uh, can be used for way more sophisticated tasks. So you can format text such that it looks like a conversation between two people. And that might be a conversation between you and Elon Musk. And because the model read all the text about Elon Musk, it will be able to predict Elon Musk words as it would be Elon Musk. It will speak about colonization of uh, Mars about sustainable future and so on. And um, it's also possible to, to even give arbitrary personality to the model. You can say, here is a conversation with a friendly AI bot. Mm -hmm. And the model uh, will complete the text as a friendly AI bot. So, I mean, how do I express how amazing this is? So just to clarify, a conversation, generating a conversation between me and Elon Musk, it wouldn't just generate good examples of what Elon would say, it would get the syntax all correct. So like interview style, it would say like Elon colon and Lex colon. Like it, it's not just like uh, inklings of uh, semantic correctness. It's like the whole thing, grammatical, syntactic, semantic. It's just really, really impressive uh, generalization. Yeah, I mean, I also want to, you know, provide some caveats. So it can generate few paragraphs of coherent text, but as you go to uh, longer pieces, it uh, it actually goes off the rails. Okay, if you would uh, try to write a book, it won't work out uh, this way. Uh, what way does it go off the rails, by the way? Is there interesting ways in which it goes off the rails? Like what, what, what falls apart first? So the model is trained on the, all the existing data uh, that is out there, which means that it is not trained on its own mistakes. So for instance, if it would make a mistake, then uh, I can, so to give you, give you an example. So let's say I have a conversation with a, a model pretending that is Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. And then I start putting some, uh, I'm start actually making up things which are not factual. Mm -hmm. um, I would Sounds say- like Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but I got you, sorry, yeah. Um, okay, uh, I don't know, I would say that Elon is my wife and the model will just keep on carrying uh, it on and- uh, As if it's true. Uh, yes. And in some sense, if you would have a normal conversation with Elon, he would be, what the fuck? Yeah, there would be some feedback between, so the, the model is trained on things that humans have written, but through the generation process, there's no human in the loop feedback. Correct. That's fascinating. Ma makes sense. So it's magnified, it's like the errors get magnified and magnified. And, Correct. and, and it's, a, it's also interesting. I mean, first of all, humans have the same problem. It's just that we, uh, we make 
f fewer errors and magnify the errors slower? I think that, that actually what happens with humans is if you have a wrong belief about the world as a kid, then very quickly you will learn that it's not correct because you are grounded in reality and you are learning from your new experience. Yes. But do you think the model can correct itself too? Won't it through the power of the representation and so the absence of Elon Musk being your wife, information on the internet, won't it correct itself? There won't be examples like that. So the errors will be subtle at first. Subtle at first. And in, in some sense, you can also say that the data that is not out there is a data which would represent how the human learns. Mm -hmm. That's an, and, and maybe each model would be learned, trained on such a data, then it would be better off. How intelligent is GPT-3, do you think? Like when you think about the nature of intelligence, it seems exceptionally impressive. But then if you think about the big AGI problem, is this footsteps along the way to AGI? So um, let's see, it seems that intelligence itself is there are multiple axes of it. And uh, I would expect that the, the systems that we are building, they may end up being superhuman on some axis and subhuman on some other axis. It would be surprising to me if on all axes simultaneously, they would become superhuman. Um, of course, people ask this question, is GPT a spaceship that that would take us to the moon or are we putting a, building a ladder to heaven that we are just building bigger and bigger ladder? And we don't know in some sense, uh, which one of these two. Well, works which one is better? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, I like Stairway to Heaven, it's a good song. So I'm not exactly sure which one is better, but you're saying like the, the spaceship to the moon is actually effective. Correct. So people who criticize GPT, yeah. they say, your guy's just building a, a taller a ladder mm -hmm. and it will never reach the moon. And uh, at the moment, I, I would say the way I'm thinking is, this is like a scientific question. And uh, I'm also in heart, I'm a builder creator. And like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking, let's try out. Let's see how far it goes. And uh, so far we see constantly that there is a progress. Yeah. So do you think GPT-4, GPT-5, GPT-N plus one will, um, there'll be a phase shift, like a transition to a, to a place where we'll be truly surprised. Then again, like GPT-3 is already very, like truly surprising. The people that criticize GPT-3 as a stair, as a, what is it, ladder to heaven, I think too quickly get accustomed to how impressive it is that the prediction of the next word can achieve such depth of semantics, accuracy of syntax, grammar, and semantics. Um, do, you th do you think GPT-4 and 5 and 6 will continue to surprise us? I mean, definitely there will be more impressive models. There is a question, of course, if there will be a phase shift and uh... The, also, even the way I'm thinking about the about these models is that the, when we build these models, you know, we see some level of the capabilities, but we don't even fully understand everything that the model can do. And actually, one of the best things to do is to allow other people to probe the model to even see what is possible. Mm. Hence, the, the using GPT as an API and opening it up to the world. Yeah, I mean. So when I'm thinking from perspective of, okay, they're like a, obviously various people are, that have concerns about AGI, including myself. Um, and then when I'm thinking from perspective, what's the strategy even to deploy these things to the world? The, the one strategy that I have seen many times working is the iterative deployment that you deploy um, slightly better versions and you allow other people to criticize you. So you actually are tried out you see where are their fundamental issues. And it's almost, you don't want to be in that uh, situation that you are holding into powerful system and there's like a huge overhang, then you deploy it and it might have a random chaotic impact on the world. So you actually want to be in the situation that you are gradually deploying systems. 